No, the, the enemy is the Jesuit papacy. It is the monster that afflicts us in everything. As Chinequi said, Rome is constantly in conspiracy against the rights of man around the world. And I will be reading to you his 50 years in the Church of Rome. So that you guys busy working all day, you can listen to the book. And that's another design of the Jesuits, to keep us so busy we don't have the time to, to think for ourselves for 15 seconds a day. Well, I want to help you with that. In my new nation, we're going to have honest money. That's right. We're not going to have any of the Pope's indulgences. You know what the Pope's indulgences are? Federal Reserve notes. Worthless fiat money. Notes of debt. That just discharge debt. Kind of like the game of musical chairs. I got the debt. But as soon as I, I get up, somebody takes my chair. It's a Ponzi scheme. We have E- evil money. It is evil. And every preacher in this country should be preaching against evil paper money that cannot be exchanged, that cannot be redeemed for specie, for gold coins and for silver coins. Because you see, we niggas, we ain't allowed to have any gold and silver coins. Oh no, that means you're a free man, a freeman, and we can't tolerate any freeman in North America. They gotta be slaves, handle around monopoly money. The we big men at the banks, we white power structure working for the Pope, we will tell our slaves how much that money is worth. We're gonna, we're gonna pit it against the gold and silver market every day so we can steal from them every day. Yeah, that's what we want to do. It's just that bad. So, if there's gonna be a great, a revival, the revival has to start first of all in the pulpits. For which reason I seek to to inform these preachers of their obligation. I'm adjusting my headphones here to make sure they don't creak anymore. I tell these preachers of their obligation to get involved in civil affairs. Oliver Cromwell, the greatest man, the greatest man of the last 500 years, I'm convinced. He said every Christian man is a public man. You got that, you Mennonites? Every Christian man ought to be involved in government somehow, some way. Because if you don't, you leave the vacuum open to the papacy and their agents to take over the government. And that's why you have these agents of Rome, most of them Catholics, in the government managing everything. Don't you think for one second, Barry Davis Obama, that's his real name, Barry Davis. He was named Barry, and his real father was a black communist named Frank Marshall Davis. have it on my website, and then there's been a recent video released, uh, sent to me by my friend, by my black friend Omar out of Delaware. And the name of that video is Dreams from My Real Father. And it completely proves that Frank Marshall Davis was Barry's daddy. A communist. And his master is a white man who's a Roman Catholic, Joe Biden. The vice president is always the president. The vice president under George Bush, why, who was that? The wicked and evil, rapacious Dick Cheney. He was the real president, not George W. Bush, that imbecile. Who's the real president under Ronald Reagan? Who was his real president? George Herbert Walker Bush. He was the real president. And the Secretary of State, not of Malta, Alexander Haig, whose brother, Frank Haig, is a Jesuit who teaches what physics at the Jesuit University in Baltimore. The vice president is always the president. So it is today. That's why good old Joe is at the right hand of Barry every time Barry signs an act in the law. And Joe's saying, that's good nigga. That's good nigga now. Go ahead, just sign it for us. Sign it for us and the Jesuits of Georgetown and the Pope and continue to drive this nation to desperation, to poverty. 
Just go ahead, Barry. And you know what? We white men can blame all the blacks for what you do. That's right. We're going to blame all the blacks for it so that we can ultimately have a race war and then a right-wing white fascist military dictatorship. And, and Barry Davis Obama is facilitating white fascism. That's why he's the greatest enemy to you black people on the face in this country. He's not your friend. The black man that's your friend will advocate racial separation under nationhood to get away from these white people and have your own nation so you can govern yourselves according to this book, the AV 1611 King James Bible, and seek God's blessing and intervention to help you. And any black man that's not doing that is just a servant of the devil. And while we're on the topic of black men, I want to point out to you that every design, every attempt for a back to Africa movement by black, has, by black men has been thwarted and crushed by the Jesuit order. That's what Lincoln wanted to do. He wanted to send the blacks back to Africa. And most of them wanted to go. That's why in, during the days of President James Monroe, we white Protestant men founded a place, bought it from the tribal chiefs in Africa called Liberia. We bought it for the blacks here in America. And then Thomas Buchanan, who was a relation, I believe the brother of President James Buchanan, he was the first governor there in Liberia. He dies of the African fever, trying to help black people of this country get back to Africa to try to make amends for the wicked and sinful African slave trade that, according to Blake, W.O. Blake in his great work, um, The History of Slavery and the Slave Trade, says that 30 million of them were brought into, into the Western Hemisphere. And one-third of them were sent to the bottom of the ocean. No. The black men have been taught to hate the white man. Why do you think this government has given you welfare for the last 60, 70 years, since what, 1930s, 1940s? So that they would encourage you to copulate to create all these bastard, illegitimate children that have no fathers, for which reason the prisons are full of them because daddy wasn't home to whip their butts when they were disobedient, as white fathers generally used to do, as my dad did to me, so that there would be huge black populations in all the major cities easily incited to hate and kill whitey. Isn't that the purpose for the nation of Islam now? Now come on. Isn't that the purpose for the new Black Panthers? Now come on. To incite race hatred against all white men in general, not distinguishing between the white Roman Catholics who generally hate all blacks and the white Protestants and Baptists who've taught the blacks the Bible, who went into their ghettos to bring their their slums, to bring their children to white churches, to teach them the gospel. We're not the same. All white men are not the same. So that they then could incite the blacks of the major cities. First of all, the miscegenation. Got to have a white woman. Got to get my wood wet. Got to have a white woman. And then after that, because the judgment of God on miscegenation is race war. That's how it always happens. So that then the Jesuits would incite their race war. Black on white race war to begin with in the major cities. After the Jesuits do their best to disarm every white man and take their guns away, like like uh, Blackwater did to the white men down there in New Orleans after Katrina. Mm-hmm. Blackwater just being an arm of the CIA, run by that Knight of Malta Roman Catholic Arab prince and Joseph Schmidt, who is another Knight of Malta who is his right hand man. The Knights run Blackwater, Xe. They're the Crusaders, and they're going to be used against us with the Department of Homeland Security founded by a Jesuit member of the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, John C. Gannon, who was in the CIA for 23 years. Why don't you tell us that, Michael Savage? Huh? How about you, Alex Jones? Why don't you go there? Because you're busy working for the Pope, and we can't go there, can we? So after they incite the race war, Millions of people are going to die in the major cities. Then they'll open the camps. And that's what was exposed in the Iran-Contra hearings when they were questioning that traitor, Oliver North. 
when that particular congressman from Texas put the question to him, that I've seen in the paper that there are concentration camps, and immediately North turned to his lawyer, and then that traitor of a Hawaiian senator stopped the questioning. Daniel Inyoki, I believe his name was. He stopped the questioning, this line of questioning. We can have a private session. Hey, I don't want any private sessions. A republic has no private sessions. What's discussed is open before the populace because, sirs, you're supposed to be our servants, not our masters. We're not children and infants. We're adult men. White men. So they stopped the questioning. And it was during those Iran-Contra hearings that it was disclosed that the camp that they're going to incarcerate and this is back in the 80s. They're going to incarcerate 21 million Negro, that's the term they use, Negro Americans. How come Jesse Jackson didn't tell you this, black man? How come Al Sharpton didn't tell you this, black man? How come Louis Farrakhan didn't tell you that? The, one of the killers, one of the co-conspirators in the murder of Malcolm X which is the only black leader of the 60s I have any respect for. I speak about him on several pages in my book, Vatican Assassins. No, because there's nobody speaking for you black men. Which one of your black leaders are talking about the alien Roman Catholic Mexican invasion where these millions, what, 40 million Mexicans now and other Hispanics from South America are illegally in this country, working, prospering, and putting the black man out of a job. How many of you black leaders have went to the went to the defense of your black people in this? Zero. I don't even know if Pastor Manning has said anything about this. And I kind of like him, even though I think he's also an, an agitator. He's agitating white men. That's what he's doing. He's agitating white men into right-wing fascism. Pastor Manning, I like some of the things he says, but he'll never tell you that the CFR is running things. He doesn't deal with the Council on Foreign Relations. And he'll never deal with the papacy. It's all about that long-legged Mac Daddy, uh, uh, Barack Hussein Obama. But he'll never tell you that Barack Hussein Obama, really Barry Davis, was trained by Jesuit Greg Galuzzo of the of the Gamaliel Foundation in Chicago that was intimately involved with uh, ACORN, that hatefully racist anti-white organization. So I will be teaching you about that, too. I'll be teaching you black men about the, your, the betrayal of your race to, by your leaders in this country because there's boule society. There's the black skull and bones just busy serving the Pope of Rome and selling you out. And Martin Lucifer King was a member of the boule society. And he didn't give one wit about the benefit of you black men and you black women ever, ever coming up out of slavery and having your own nation where you're going to be self-sufficient he never cared for you about that. He wants you utterly dependent on the federal government. Because without the federal government and not a Malta Henry Luce, there is no, there is no civil rights movement. If the civil rights movement was about racial separation and the nationhood, the Jesuits would have crushed that. Jesuit John Lafarge being the father of the black civil rights movement in the 1930s. Which reminds me, I will have my Dear black lady friend, sister in the Lord, Aaron Fraser on the broadcast from time to time. And she'll be teaching you about the wickedness of Martin King, Michael King, that was his real name. And his audience with the Pope, with Ralph Abernathy. Listen, anybody that has an audience with the Pope is serving the devil. <laughs> 